Hey guys, welcome back to some more online mobility with Ethan. I am Ethan. So what we've got for you today is three sets of five different movements. So I'm gonna demo each of the five movements and then you're gonna run through those five movements three times. First movement we've got today is something called a hip car. So not hip car. Uh, car stands for controlled articulated rotations. With these, you have two options. The first option is to do these on all fours. So we come down, hands underneath the shoulders and then knees underneath the hips. From here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep one knee bent at 90 degrees and we're gonna send that leg straight up while trying to keep a nice neutral spine. And then here, we rotate the leg out, bring it around and then come back to where we started. So again, we come up, rotate out, try to get a, as much of that movement to come from the hip, try our best to not rotate the spine or turn the rib cage. So we're gonna go 10 in one direction and then we're gonna stay on that same side and then do 10 in the opposite direction. So you may find that one side or one direction is a little harder than the other, but that is perfectly normal. So again, the emphasis is on having as much of that movement to come from the hip. So if you have one side that's a little bit stiff and you can only get to say here, I'd much rather you guys get that than arch the back, turn, look back, be like, oh, look how high I can get my leg because you're not making it a hip movement, you're turning it into an all body movement. So again, it'll be 10 one direction, 10 the other direction, and then you swap sides, 10 one direction, 10 the other direction. Second movement is a glute isometric hold. Oh wait, I didn't show you the second option. Uh, for the hip cars, your other option is to do it standing. So you can either stand on the spot or you can use a wall or a doorway to help support you. Either way, it's gonna be essentially the exact same movement. So if you look from the side, we'll keep one leg bent. We bring it back, we rotate the hip out, bring it around and finish where we started. So again, leg stays bent, we send it back, rotate it out, come around and back down. So the standing one will be a little bit more challenging because if you look from the front, as I send the leg back, everything's fine. Then as the leg comes out and around, my body wants to shift this direction to help lift that leg up. But I wanna try my best to keep my shoulders over my hip, so that way the movement just comes from the hip. So you can also imagine that there's a little fence or a little gate that you're trying to step over. So if I go the opposite direction now, I come up, I step over the imaginary gate, swing it back around, and then drop it back down. So there are your two options. Now, back to the second movement, the glute isometric holds. So from here, we start on all fours, and then we're gonna send one leg straight out to the side. Then what we're doing from here is trying to keep that leg straight and lift that foot just slightly off the ground. So, this will be a 20 to 30 second hold. Obviously, if you can hold closer to 30, you're doing well. If you can't hold for at least 20 seconds, then you can try and just bring the foot off the ground, lower it back down. Bring it back off, lower it back down. So demo the movement now. Hands under the shoulders, legs straight. We come up, hold, try my best to not shift my weight. Again, I'm trying to keep my hips and shoulders square and facing straight down. So I'd hold here, ideally for 20 to 30 seconds. And if you can't hold for at least 20 seconds, I can go maybe a three second hold and rest. Come up again, another three second hold, rest. So just split it up however you like. 20 to 30 seconds on one side, 20 to 30 seconds on the other side. <clears throat> Third movement is our 90-90s. So 90-90s because we have 90 degrees of knee flexion and we have roughly 90 degrees of 
hip flexion. So 90 knees, 90 hip. What we're gonna do is really you actually have a lot of options here. The first one is to lean back, have your hands resting on the ground behind you. We come up, bring the trailing leg up, swap the legs over, and then finish in the exact same position on the other side. So then we come up, over, rotate the hip, and back down. Then to progress it and make it a little more challenging, you can go one hand, so bring that hip up, over, swap sides. Up, over, swap sides. Eventually, you might be able to do this with no hands. So we come up, bring that trailing leg over, and lower down to the ground. With these 90-90s, the more upright you stay, the more challenging it's gonna be on that hip. So if you can't stay upright in this, you feel like you just can't get that leg over, by all means, lean back. The further you lean back, the more open it's gonna make that hip, and it's gonna make it a little easier. Now, if you can do these 90-90s, no worries. You actually have a few more, few more options to make it uh, more challenging. So what you could do from here is you'd come up. So we're trying to push our hips forward here, and then I'm gonna control down. Then as soon as my hips touch the ground, I swap sides, just like we did for our regular 90-90s, and then come up. So I'm gonna open that hip. I'm getting a bit of a stretch through that groin. Lower down with control. Rotate over. And come up. So that's one option. Another option is to do that exact same thing as what I just did, except you're then adding another element. So that other element would be coming here, and then this front leg is gonna stay where it is. This trailing leg is gonna swing around, and I'm gonna be in the bottom of a lunge position. So we come swing around, lunge position here. Then coming back down, that's the tricky part. We come down, swing that leg around, try to control down, and then I swap sides. So I come over, open up the hips. Oh, there's a wall there. Bottom of the lunge, come back down, try to lower with control, and then again. So 1990s, we'll be doing 20 in total. So it'll just be one, two, three, four, up to 20. Feel free to do you know, just the one variation for all 20. You might wanna do five or six of one variation, then do another five or six of a different variation. It's completely up to you. Your fourth movement, something a little different. It's got a single leg wall push. So you will need uh, a wall. You could probably use a door. Uh, just be careful, no one's on the other side. For this, you're going to lean against the wall roughly at about a 45 degree angle. Then from here, I wanna keep my foot that's, uh, that's in contact with the ground parallel with the wall. Then I'm going to lift my heel up and then push into the wall. So I'm gonna hold this for 15 seconds and then I'm gonna rest for five seconds. I'm gonna hold for another 15 seconds, rest for five seconds, and then do a third 15 second hold and then rest and swap sides. So you're gonna spend one minute on one side, one minute on the other with that 15 second work, five second break. The reason we're doing this is when we bring that heel up and push into the wall, you can see that my knee falls inside of my ankle. So I'm essentially doing that. The reason why we wanna try and strengthen this position is this outside of the shin and outside of the foot, the muscles are lengthening in that position. And then <clears throat> by holding that, we're then trying to force them to hold strong. The reason that we wanna try and strengthen the outside of the shin, outside of the foot, is because majority of the time, if you have experienced a rolled ankle, majority of the time, it's because your foot has rolled, but the muscles that sit here have gone further than what they can tolerate. So here, we can almost mimic that rolling of the ankle, but in a safe, strong position. 
So again, 15 second hold, five second break, do that three times on one side and then repeat it on the other side. Then your fifth and final movement is gonna be a hamstring bridge or a hamstring march. With the hamstring bridge, you go hands by your side, feet will be, oh sorry, heels will be just out of reach of your fingertips and toes will be up. So from here, we're gonna push the hips up, hold for a second, and then come back down. So pushing up, hold, control down. If you take the bridge option, it'll be 20 bridges. So up, hold, control down, one, going to 20. If you wanna do the march, the march will look like this. So we hold the top of our bridge and then we bring one knee towards the chest. So like we're running or like we're marching. So that'll be one, swap it over, two, swap it over, three. With the hamstring march, it'll be 10 on each side. So you can either do 10 alternating or you can do all 10 on one side, all 10 on the other. If you do try the march, try your best to keep your hips level. So what I mean by that is when I'm in this position here, if I go to bring my left leg towards my chest, I wanna try my best to not have that left hip drop. I wanna try as best I can to keep my hips nice and level and avoid that. This does become quite challenging because you are asking one side of the hip to support both sides. So don't be worried if your hips do drop a little bit, just try to minimize it. A good way around that is to try your best to push that supporting leg into the ground, really drive that heel into the ground before you bring the other foot up. If you can drive that heel into the ground, it's gonna make everything contract a little harder around that hip and you might find it's easier to stay level. So that's the lower body mobility. So again, three sets of the five movements. Uh, we will put the uh, rep ranges and the names and the movements uh, either in the comments or to be attached somewhere uh, attached somewhere on this video. If you do happen to run through this lower body mobility, let us know how you go, film it, tag us on Instagram, and just let us know how you go, okay? Have fun.